In this video, I'll show you how to define your modules inside of the modular monolith architecture. Modules represent logical boundaries containing a subset of your application's functionalities. And I'm also going to give you a few guidelines to help you decide how to split your modules and what are the most important questions that you need to answer. I'm continuing the story about the modular monolith architecture and in this video I'm going to focus on modules. Let's take a look at a simplified diagram of the run tracker system and you can see three distinct aggregates in this diagram. We have the users and followers in one aggregate, we have the users activity with some likes and comments in the other aggregate and we also have the workout with the corresponding exercises in the third aggregate. I'm also mapping these aggregates into respective entities in my domain representation in the code, and now what I want to do is to figure out how I'm going to split this domain into modules. The first idea that could come to mind would be to split each aggregate into its own module. This could be too granular for our use case because we're going to end up with too many modules that contain not so much functionality inside. So I'm going to propose an alternative and then I'm going to argument why I think that solution would be better. And that alternative is to group the users and the followers into one module and then the workouts together with the activities in the second module. The reason for this is because activities and workouts are inherently related. An activity basically represents a real workout that the user has completed and we can expect to see a lot of data sharing between these two aggregates. If we were to place them into separate modules, how would we make these modules isolated and independent of each other? You can see how this could be problematic in the case of the workout and the activity aggregate, which is why I'm proposing to split the modules like this. We could call this the users aggregate and this one could be called training. A few more points I want to highlight when it comes to defining modules. What a module basically represents is a cohesive set of functionalities. Cohesive means that they are related together, so if you go back to our diagram, everything related to the users and the followers has high cohesion, so we're going to place them together. On the other hand, use cases related to activities and workouts also have high cohesion, so I decided to organize them into a separate module. Another way to look at it is to split your system by following the bounded context. This is a concept from domain-driven design, and what a bounded context is, is a boundary within a domain where a particular domain model applies. The boundary in this example is logical, and the module is also a logical construct inside of our modular monolith. So you can see there is some alignment between these concepts. One more thing to keep in mind is that you should be able to treat each module as a separate application inside of your system. And when you think about it from this perspective, you might come to a different conclusion. Again, a quick recap for the two modules that I'm planning to create. One is going to be the users module with the users and followers, and the other one will be the training module with the activity and the workouts and the exercises. Now, what are some other considerations that we should make when deciding how to split our modules? One thing to keep in mind is that getting the module boundaries right is inherently difficult and the likelihood that you're going to do it from the first try is very low but I'm not saying this to deter you in fact you should realize that module boundaries are a thing that evolves as your application grows and the module boundaries that you set at the start are likely to change as the project progresses and this is an important realization to come to a few questions you should be asking yourself when deciding how to split your modules the first one is how often will your modules communicate? This should be an important indicator telling you how dependent your modules are on each other. In general, the more communication you see between various modules, the higher likelihood that they should probably be merged together. One more question to ask yourself is how are you going to share the data between the modules? Do they need to have the data in real time or can this be propagated using events? where you're going to deal with eventual consistency in some way. This also ties into how frequently your modules are going to communicate because one reason for two modules to talk to each other is to exchange data. So think about how you're going to share data when making the decision of how you're going to split the modules. And one last question you should ask yourself is how you're going to deal with eventual consistency. 
Typically, this is going to happen when you are using messaging to implement communication between your modules. And in that case, there's going to be a given period of time where the data is consistent inside of one module, but it's still not propagated into the other module. You need to think about what kind of impact this will have on your application at runtime. And if you come to the conclusion that eventual consistency is a big problem, that might be a warning sign that your module boundaries are incorrect. I said that we were going to split our system into two modules, the users and the training module. And let's start from our monolith application and start introducing the concept of modules. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a modules folder. And then I'm going to create two separate folders for the individual modules. So I'm going to have a users folder and a training folder for the training module. Now I'm going to introduce two class library projects into these folders. So let me add a new project and I'm going to choose class library. Now, what is the naming convention that I like to follow? I like to name my project with modules and then the name of the module. And then what is this project inside of the module? So if I want to continue following the clean architecture, then I'm going to have a modules users domain project representing my domain layer for the users module. The solution folders inside of Visual Studio are logical and it would be a good idea to also make these folders in the file system. So that's what I'm going to do under the hood and let's create our users domain project. I'm going to add one more project. This one is going to be called modules and then users application. And this will represent the application layer of the users module. So with these two projects in place, I'm going to create the same layout for the training module. So let's start with modules training and then domain. Let's go ahead and create this project. And I'm also going to create one more project, which is going to be my application layer for the training module. So I'm going to call it modules training application. Let's go ahead and add this project. And I'm going to get rid of these default classes. And now I'm going to start moving around the files from the domain project. So let's grab the users and the followers folder and move them into the domain project for the users module. Let's do the same for our training module. And if you open up some entity like the user, you're going to get some compile warnings. So you're going to start fixing these problems one by one. So first of all, we need to reference the shared kernel project from our domain projects. So let's go ahead and add those references. If I go ahead and build the domain project for the users module, it should compile. And you can see that this is the case. I can also go ahead and do the same for the training module and you will see that it's compiling. All we are doing so far is just rearranging our domain entities. The users and follower entities are now in the users module and the workouts and activity entities are in the training module. At this point, the original domain project is empty and I can go ahead and delete it from the solution. The next thing I want to do is to add the application project. So I'm going to start by grabbing the workouts and the activities folders which contain the respective use cases. And let's move them into the application project for the training module. Let's do the same for the users and followers. And I'll move it into the application project of the users module. Now, if I open up some use case like the get user by ID query handler, you're going to see that we get a lot of errors. Most of these are missing abstraction for the application project. So let's go ahead and introduce this reference in the application project. We want to reference modules users domain and we also want to do the same for the application project in the training module. I'm going to reference the respective domain project because the application project can no longer reference the domain, but is depending on some types from the shared kernel. We're going to add the shared kernel reference and this should fix most of the problems in compiling our application projects. If I open up the application project for a moment, you will see that I have a leftover dependency injection class, which was configuring mediator. It was configuring validators for fluent validation, and it was also registering the follower service. So we should move part of this responsibility into the modules themselves. So I'm going to copy this class and I'm going to add it to the respective application project. So let's start with the training module. And here I'm not going to be referencing the pipeline behaviors. I'm going to register them just once from the original application project. We can leave the add validators from assembly call and I'm going to get rid of the follower service call. 
I'm going to do the same for my user module. So let me add the dependency injection class and then I'm going to clean up the service registration. It's actually safe to call add mediator multiple times because the implementation under the hood is only going to register the required services once. And the reason we are calling it multiple times is to register the use cases from each of our application layers. At this point, I've split the domain and the application projects for my two modules. And what I'm going to do now is to do a refactor and adjust the respective namespaces. I'm going to use Resharper to do this. So let's go ahead and adjust the namespaces and I'll do the same for my training module. So I'm going to run the adjust namespaces refactor. And if I try to build the application projects for my two modules, starting with the user module, you will see that we are able to build the users module. However, if I try to build the application module, you will see that I'm getting some compile errors. If I take a look what the problem is here in the create activity command handler, I'm referencing the I user repository abstraction. Moreover, I'm also referencing the user entity and the user errors as part of my use case. And I'm not doing that in just one place. I also have another use case that has similar logic inside. So what is the simplest way to fix this? Well, let's just introduce a reference to the user's domain project. This is where all of these abstractions are defined and this should fix our compiled problems. So with the reference in place, I'm going to import the respective namespaces and let's try to build our project. If I click rebuild on the training modules application project, you will see that the build is successful and we managed to split our domain project into two separate modules. However, these modules aren't completely isolated from each other. And this is something that we're going to solve in some future videos where we are going to talk about communication patterns inside of a modular monolith and how to implement data isolation between your modules. If you want to learn more about modular monoliths and where we are going with this architecture, then you should watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons under this video and until next time, stay awesome.